Hello guys and welcome back to Hiring Guru Official. In today's video, we'll learn how to ace non-voice worsened, which is also known as worsened writing test. This test will take approximately 35 minutes to complete. This is an online test and results will be available as soon as the test is over. This test or an assessment has five sections. Part A, typing. Part B, sentence completion. Part C, dictation. Part D, passage reconstructions. And Part E, email writing. Before starting the test, make sure to do two important things. First, your typing speed should be between 35 to 40 words per minute. A higher typing speed will ensure better test results. I recommend a minimum typing speed of 35 words per minute with at least 90 to 95% accuracy. Secondly, you need to prepare any one topic of your own choice for at least 250 to 350 words. You must choose a topic that you're comfortable discussing about and show that the topic is prepared in a way that there are no grammatical errors or spelling mistakes. Now let's move on to our first section which is typing. As the name suggests, this section will measure your typing speed. You will see some content on your screen and just below that you will see a box. You have to type the same content in that box. The moment you will click on the box and type the first word, your one minute timer will start. And within these 60 seconds, you will have to type as many words as you can. The idea should be to keep typing until the time is up. Your work will be saved automatically. Now let me share some tips for clearing this section. In this typing test, accuracy does not matter much. Let me repeat, in this typing test, accuracy does not matter much. Here, 80% of weightage is based on your typing speed and only 20% is on accuracy. This means your entire focus should be on typing as many words as you can. If there are any spelling or punctuation mistakes, it's not necessary to keep deleting and retyping words. You can keep going, keep your entire focus on typing as many words as you can. Just remember to maintain 80-20 ratio. Please keep in mind that this is applicable only for this section. Let's move on to our second section, sentence construction. You will be given 16 fill in the blank statements. You will have 25 seconds to complete each sentence. Here you just need to type that best fits the meaning of the sentence. You will be given 16 fill in the blank statements one after the other. Please note there will be no multiple choices available. You will have to type only one word that best fits the meaning of the sentence. Let me share some examples. Example number one. The musician played a dash melody that touched everyone's heart. Now you could see there are multiple answers that we can fit here. That's the reason there are no multiple choices available. That's why in the beginning I told you that you just have to type only one word that best fits the meaning of the sentence. In this case, the answer could be beautiful. Now let's look into our second example. Expected rain shower caught everyone by dash. The answer is surprise. Number three, the dark clouds in the sky indicated an approaching dash. Answer is strong. Now let me share some tips for clearing this section. Take your time to read and understand the sentence carefully. Pay attention to the overall meaning and context of the sentence and try to identify the word that completes the sentence. Try and pay attention to any clues within the sentence that may hint at the missing word. Look at the keywords or phrases and think about the possible word that could fit the meaning of the sentence. Let me now share some tricks for clearing this section. And yes, the good thing about this section is there could be multiple answers for single fill in the blank. Let me explain you how. The musician played a dash melody that touched everyone's heart. Answer could be beautiful. Now instead of using beautiful, you can also write divine, delightful, marvelous or wonderful. Point to be noted, do not leave the fill in the blank section blank. If you are not able to find the answer, still write something. Leaving it blank or marking it as not attempted will result in negative marking. Guys will be doing this only and only to avoid the negative marking. Just make sure you don't overdo it. Else I think you can predict your own scores. Try to be realistic as much as you can. Do this only in case if you get stuck. To make you feel comfortable with this section, let me share 40 examples of sentence completion. You can either take a screenshot or pause this video to read them. Now let's move on to our next section, section number 3, Dictation. In this section, an automated voice will speak a sentence to you and you must type it exactly as you hear it. Basically, this is a listening and typing round. You need to plug in your earphones and you will hear a recorded sentence. After that, you will have to type the same sentence in the box provided on the screen. Let me explain you through an example. A machine would say, leave town on the next train. And you must type the same sentence in the given box, leave town on the next train. There will be a total of 16 sentences one after the other. And you will get 25 seconds to type each sentence. Other example is, a certified swimming instructor is with the students at all the time. 
and you must type exactly as you hear it. Sounds easy, but here is a trick. First two or three sentences will be short and easy and you won't have any issues in typing them. But slowly and gradually sentences will become longer and it may become difficult for you to memorize the entire sentence or there could be a situation where you might not be able to understand the sentences due to foreign accent. Trust me, it happens at times that you won't be able to comprehend or understand the sentence at all due to the British or American accent. Point to be noted, as I said earlier, you must not skip any sentence or leave the box blank. The same rule applies to this section as well. Leaving a section blank means getting negative marking. We must attempt the sentence and try to complete it in our own words if we could not fully understand the actual sentence. Again, we'll only be doing this to avoid negative marking. My recommendation would be to try and type equally long sentence as what we heard. Example, if the original sentence was a certified swimming instructor is with the student at all the time and you could not understand more than half of the sentence due to the accent issues and since we cannot leave the section blank, then you can type something like swimming teacher told the students to come on time. Again guys, try to be realistic as much as you can. Listen to the sentences very carefully and make sure you type it exactly as you hear it. I just give you a cheat code to use only when you get stuck and this is to avoid negative marking and get at least few points. Another tip to clear this section is start typing as soon as you hear the sentence. By doing this, you will get more time to think and type. And with the flow, you would also increase your chances of completing the sentence without forgetting them. Another good practice is you can also use abbreviations and shortcuts. Develop a set of personalized abbreviations or shortcuts for common words or phrases. This can help you type more efficiently during the dictation. Again, to make you comfortable with this section, let me share a few sample sentences. Hope these sample sentences will help you to prepare better. Take a screenshot or pause this video to read them. Now let's move on to our next section, section 4. Just before we understand this section, I would like to highlight that both section 4 and section 5 are the sections that produce the highest scores in this test. So pay extra attention. Section 4, Passage Reconstruction. In this section, a passage will appear on your screen and you must read and understand the content of the passage within 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, the passage will disappear and a new screen will appear with a box. Here you will have 90 seconds to retype the entire passage from your memory as the passage will disappear and nothing would be there on the screen. Your task is to reconstruct the passage in your own words and type it in your own language within 90 seconds. Point to be noted, you don't need to memorize the passage word by word. You can rewrite it in your own words. After 90 seconds, your response will be saved automatically and you will get another passage on your screen. Repeat the same process for each passage. You will get a total of four paragraphs which will appear on your screen one after the other and you have to read and reconstruct each of them. Let me share a sample passage. At a party yesterday, there was a big cake for a big crowd. When the party was done, there was only one piece of cake left. A young boy and a young girl both wanted to eat it. But the boy took the piece of cake for himself. And after the girl cried, he decided to give that piece of cake to her. The boy's parents were pleased to see that. Let me share some key tips for reconstructing the passage. When you read the passage, make sure you read it thoroughly to understand the main ideas and the key details. Focus more on understanding the content before attempting to reconstruct it. Identify the main points, arguments, or themes presented in the passage. My golden tip for attempting this kind of test is I would first understand the passage in my own native language and create a mental picture to comprehend what exactly is happening. Once I grabs the characters, story idea, and content, I used to translate my thoughts into words and then reconstruct it in English by retyping. Okay guys, now we apply the same concept in this story. We can see how we can understand it and reconstruct it. The birthday party is going on where many people have come. There was a cake cutting ceremony and one cake cut piece was left, which the boy and girl wanted to take both. But when the boy took that piece of cake, the girl was watching it and crying. And when the boy saw that the girl was crying, he gave that piece of cake to him. And when he saw the boy's parents, he was very happy. Guys, एक important चीज़ याद रखना, name, places, characters और important details को rephrase मत करना, else you will have difficulties rewriting them. For us to translate this into our own words, there was a birthday party going on, and quite a few people gathered to attend it. They had a cake cutting ceremony. When the party ended, there was only one piece of cake left. Both the boy and the girl wanted to eat it. The boy picked up the piece of cake and tried to eat it. But when the girl started crying, he gave the piece of cake to her. The boy's parents were happy when they saw that. Easy, isn't it? If you do this, it will be difficult to do it. And this is how we need to write in all four passages. Guys, point to be noted. 
this test will be checked by a bot and not by a human. The bot will only check your grammar, punctuation, capitalization mistakes, and a bit of content. This means you can easily play with words in any ways we have been asked to rewrite the story in our own words, not word to word. So doing this is absolutely correct. And just in case if you did not understand or memorize more than half of the passage due to the accent issues or anything else which is highly unlikely, then you can discuss anything related to the topic in question. In such case, you can talk about your own birthday party. The same rule applies to this section as well. Do not leave any section or any part blank, else you'll face negative marking. Plus, when we know we do not have to write things word for word, there'll be a lot of room to play around. Try not to change the content of the story too much unless you absolutely did not understand it. Now, this is where that one passage comes into play, which I asked you to prepare in the beginning. You can also write some part of your self-introduction or your most memorable day or the person that you admire the most. You can also write about your previous company's process, your birthday or the place that you may have visited recently. Make sure your grammar is correct and you do not make spelling mistakes. To help you practice, let me share a few sample stories. You can pause the video to read them or take a screenshot to read later. Let's move on to our final section, section 5, email writing. As the name suggests, this is an email writing section. It involves situation-based email writing. You need to read a description of the situation and write an email addressing the issues discussed. Guys, I believe this is one of the easiest section of the assessment. The test instruction says that the length of the email should be 100 words. But I think that's not correct. We have observed that those who write passage below 100 and 180 words may face rejection due to low word count. The logic behind this is that they are expecting someone to have a typing speed of 35 words per minute or more and they are giving 9 minutes to compose an email. Logically speaking, someone with a typing speed of 35 words per minute or more would be able to write more than 300 or 350 words within 9 minutes. Even if I consider that someone might think and type, causing their speed to drop to 30 or 25 words per minute, they would still be able to write more than 220 words. I'm not sure about the algorithm they're using for this, but I've seen people getting rejected due to low word count even when the person wrote more than 180 words email. Anyways, these were my observations and I literally want to leave the decision to you about what you want to do. But my recommendation would be to write anything between 220 to 300 words if you really want to crack this out. Let me now share a sample email scenario which you may get in this section. Imagine that you work for an organization and there is an open space of 200 square yards. The management is seeking suggestions on what to do with this open space. You have three options. Should we open a multi-level parking, an on-site gym or a cafeteria for employees? Your task is to write an email to your manager sharing your suggestions. Guys, please note, you do not have to follow any specific format. You can start writing your suggestions right away. On the right hand top, you would see a word count and a timer section as well, which you can always refer to while typing. Now let's go ahead and see how to write an email. I hope this email finds you well. My name is Ashu S. Malhotra and I work as a customer care executive here at our organization. I wanted to share a suggestion that I believe could benefit our team and contribute to a healthier work environment. Considering the hectic work schedules and busy lifestyle we all lead, finding time to hit the gym can be challenging. To address this, I propose the idea of setting up an on-site gym within our premises. Having a gym on-site would make it more convenient for the team to incorporate regular physical activity into their routine. Guys, it's an easy topic. I can easily go ahead and write 350 or 400 words within 9 minutes. But here we are not talking about myself. We're talking about you. Let's focus on what to do if you get stuck with any topic and you are not able to write after a few words. Point to be noted, as I've been saying, the test will be checked by a bot and not by a human being. So we have a scope of playing with words. But we must make sure the email should be grammatically correct and should not have spelling mistakes. Time to use some cheat codes. And I would recommend you to use these cheat codes only when you get stuck somewhere and you're not able to write anything further at all. We'll do the same as we did in our previous sections. Point number one, you can make your writing more interesting and at the same time you can meet the word count by using few lines from the questions or rephrasing it in your own way. Point number two, include some lines from the passage you prepared before taking this test. Example, your introduction, women empowerment or any other topic that you may like. You can discuss about your birthday party, you can talk about your most memorable day or 
You can talk about your previous company environment or the process as well. It will surely help you in meeting the desired word count, but I'm sure after listening to point number three, you will fall in love with it because it follows a safe and ethical approach. Let's discuss about point number three now. Remember, this will be a situation-based email writing section. You will receive three situations and you need to write about one situation. However, you can write about all three situations if you wish. For example, after writing few lines about the first situation, you can start comparing all three options or express your agreement or disagreement or talk about advantages, disadvantages, all the available options which you're not addressing directly. Example, you can write, I'm not in a favor of cafeteria because the majority of employees brings their lunch or snacks. And food is something that can easily be prepared at home or ordered online, which hardly takes any time and so on. Similarly, you can write about the second option as well. Example, I'm also not in favor of multi-level parking since the majority of employees come by bike or public transport. Our company has thousands of employees and even if we make a multi-level parking, it won't accommodate all the cars or bikes and then we'll run into a risk that only the top level management people would be given priority over the middle level or entry level management which will add dissatisfaction. Guys, trust me, if you're clever enough, you can easily include all three options in the same email and you can easily meet the required word count. And trust me, this is the safest and the ethical option as well since our content is revolving around the topic in question. But just make sure whatever you write is grammatically correct and free of spelling mistakes. If this is followed, then consider your job is done. Guys, I would request you to make a note of all the important points that I've discussed in this video today. And one last thing. Once you clear your worst in test, your next round of interview will be an operations round where the hiring manager will definitely ask you a few questions. For example, if you're applying as a fresher, then they will surely ask you, what do you know about BPOs or why do you want to work with BPOs? If you're applying as an experienced professional, then they will definitely ask you, why did you leave your previous job? I've already created videos on all these topics which you should definitely check out if you want to have a job offer. I'll share the link of these videos in the description box or at the end of this video. Guys, if you think this video has added some value or increased your knowledge, then do give me a thumbs up and share this video with anyone who is about to appear for non-voice worsened or worsened writing tests. Guys, I'm sure after watching this video and following my instruction, you will be able to clear your non-voice worsened test. If you want to appreciate my hard work, then consider giving me a like and subscribe to my channel Hiring Guru Official and turn on the bell icon so that you get notified about all my future videos. That's all for now and I'll see you in my next video. You take care of yourself. Bye-bye now.